He is known as the amazing and infamously known Jar Jar Binks from the prequel series. He has continued to portray that character in one of the best animated series of all time, Star Wars, The Clone Wars. He even parodied himself and won an award uh, on Robot Chicken for bringing the voice back, and we love him for it. He can be seen, on, and we're going to talk about it a little bit today. We'll see what he can tell us um, as a Jedi Master on the upcoming Star Wars Jedi Temple Challenge. Please give it up for the amazing Ahmed Best, everybody. What's happening? What's up, Ahmed? What's up? That is a beautiful, uh, beautiful, I know it's not a real portrait behind you. <laughs> Tell us about that quick <laughs> mosaic. Like I just want to hear a little bit about it before we bring everyone else out. Um, it was, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm really a big fan of all the Jedi Temple Challenge, Keller and Beck art that's yes. going out around the universe. And um, I try to, I'm a big art fan. I grew up um, loving art. My mom's an artist, my brother's, I come from a family of musicians and artists. So um, all the stuff that's been happening, I'm, um, I'm showcasing it on my Instagram. Oh my God. Page. And this was one of the portraits that came in. If you go to my IG, there's a link to the artist on my IG. So it's a beautiful, um, it's a beautiful portrait. It's, it's, beautiful it's portrait. wonderful. Right? I thought it was really good. And since uh, Kellerin is a purple lightsaber wielder, ah, the purple nice. is the, yeah, is the okay, background. I like but I, I really it. like this one. I like the return of the purple lightsaber. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but let's get the rest of the cast uh, out here. Um, you may have seen them in Game of Thrones, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Um, he took over the role originated by uh, David Prowse in the suit as Darth Vader in Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Please give it up for Daniel Napros. Hey, Daniel. How are you? Thank you so much for being here. Oh, no, it's a pleasure. It's my first time over there, so I hope I'm going to enjoy myself. Yeah. <laughs> Is this your first time in a Zoom call in general? I don't know Zoom called before, but we've never gone stateside, so this is going to be brilliant. To be, oh my gosh! Well, you there. know, Daniel, and, and it's amazing. And um, it, not only are we broadcasting stateside, there are people watching from around the world. So this is really cool. Anywhere where there's a Star Wars fan, um, we're, we're happy to have you. So uh, and people are watching. So thanks so much. All right, next up, uh, you have seen her in Supernatural, The Mentalist, the animated Castle Castlevania uh, series. Um, she plays the armorer in The Mandalorian. Let's hear it for Emily Swallow. Emily, this is so crazy. You, uh, for those fans that have been watching us on Virtual Experiences, you were on our very first uh, Virtual Experience for Supernatural, and now you're back again um, for the Star Wars universe. Thank you so, so much. So happy to be her. back. And, yeah. And, and, I mean, you, you've told me that you've learned so much, so I'm ready to see how <laughs> spectacular this one is. Emily's, Emily's like, you had a good, you had a high bar before, but now it better be raised. It better <laughs> yeah, be I thought it went great, so. Yeah, awesome. And beautiful uh, cutout there, stand-up Thank cutout. you. This, uh, is, this um, is courtesy of my parents who bought this on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, amazing, amazing. All right, let's bring out, uh, you know him from his uh, stunt work, an amazing stunt performer. Um, we've also seen him in the flesh uh, in various movies and television series. Jumanji, welcome to the jungle, Breaking Bad, Westworld. Uh, he played Paz Bizla and also the alpha trawler on The Mandalorian. Let's hear it for Tate Fletcher. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Great to be here. <laughs> hey, you got a, a great backdrop as well. Where are you tuning in from? I'm in Santa Fe, New Mexico right now. Oh, my gosh. That looks nice. beautiful, yeah. beautiful back there. I just left L.A. about two days ago. The, the, as everything was turning on, I was like, I got to get my head clear for a little bit. So I, I took a little, little respite. Yeah, no, that's awesome. We uh, we all need to uh, take some time to get our heads clear right now. And I just want to let you all know that the fans are using this moment right now to to clear their heads a little bit and take a break. So we appreciate you all being here. Uh, let's bring out our next amazing performer um, from The Hunger Games, Van Helsing. Um, she is the performance artist behind Kuil, uh, who is uh, obviously voiced um, by a different actor. But let's bring her out. That is Misty Rosas. <laughs> hey, Misty. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much you for driving. being here. Good to have you. Good to have you. I uh, love your, I can't wait to talk about puppetry. Puppetry is one of my nerddoms. And so I'm so excited to talk about mocap and, and puppetry and everything. So thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you for having me. Thank yeah, you. of course. Um, and last but not least, he's been waiting in the wings um, patiently. Um, and we love him. He has taken over um, from the, the brilliant Anthony Daniels um, and has done such a good job. I wouldn't even have known that it was a different performer. And that's how great of a job this gentleman has done, um, taking over the, the role of C-3PO inside the suit. Um, he also played the uh, RA-7 droid and uh, Zero. 
and the ferryman, my gosh, uh, all kinds of parts on The Mandalorian. Um, please give it up for Chris Bartlett. Hey guys, I'm so happy to be here with you. I'm looking forward to being with you in person, but so glad uh, Wizard World's given us the chance to be able to talk like this. Uh, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's crazy times, but you know, what we found is even despite sort of the disconnect of physicality, there's been so much more connection um, just with folks checking in on each other. You know what That's I mean? Great. And yeah, and I think that is what's been so beautiful about this time. Uh, obviously, uh, some important um, discussions have, uh, obviously happening over the weekend as well. And I think there's nothing but hope that I think is can come out of this and nothing but ch important change and hope. And uh, while we are all protesting and creating those movements uh, for that hope, it's nice to take a little break and, and go back to the things that we love, the moments that we uh, grew up on. And Star Wars, my gosh, is one of those things. So I speak on behalf of the fans when I just say thank you all so much for being here and giving us um, this nice little break. Uh, whether you're watching live or watching a little bit later on, uh, thank you so much. So we really appreciate you being here. Thank you. I want to get started with that fandom uh, Tony Kim, who's one of our moderators uh, and runs Hero Within, uh, had a great Star Wars panel, fan panel recently, and asked me what was my introduction to the Star Wars universe. And what's amazing is I had to think back because obviously we all know the original trilogy, but my real like fandom started with the prequel. So first of all, uh, thank you, Ahmed, uh, for giving us your beautiful character in the uh, in the prequels. Um, but I just want to go around the room and, and I and I didn't really even think about it. I was like, oh my gosh, no, that's when I started watching Star Wars. I'd love to hear a little bit about each one of yours entrance into the Star Wars fandom and universe. And maybe it was not until you got cast in the role, um, but I'd love to hear sort of when you became a fan or what was that first memory of becoming a Star Wars universe fan? Whoever wants to kick it off. Well, I was really lucky because the first thing when I was obviously young and, and the first series came in, it was the little figures. I used to collect all yes. of them. I wanted oh. to be, this is one of the most exciting things for me. When I was in the tank, we had the Imperial Guards guarding me. And all I used to do was turn around and watch them because as a kid, that was my figure that I played with jumping through the trees and pretending I was him. So that was quite a moment for me. So cool. So this yeah. like, Daniel, this was, um, and sorry, uh, Daniel, so this was original trilogy characters, right? Back when they had, um, do you still have any of those in the box? That's the, those are I the know. money. Oh, no, 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 you have to play with them. They're not supposed to be, I was a I kid. Agree. Well, I, I was agree. 11 years old, but I'm not going to keep them in the box. I, they'd be broken, they're broken by now. That's how well they were played with. <laughs> I agree, I agree with you for sure. Sorry, I, I cut a couple people off there. I think, Emily, you were uh, about, to, about to say something? Well, I just don't remember, I, I wasn't, wasn't yet around when the when the original three movies were released and I, I don't remember when I saw them I just remember that Star Wars was this integral part of my childhood like I have memories of being in the backyard with my Ewok dolls like in the bushes trying to recreate different scenes and stuff and of course wanting to be Princess Leia and I don't even I, you know I was asked recently like what was your memory of seeing the first movie and I don't even know I just know like it was always there and then I have to say, when I got cast in The Mandalorian, I realized how much I do not know about the Star Wars universe. And it's been really fun to go down those rabbit holes and discover all of the different tentacles that there are of these stories. It is expansive, to say the least. <laughs> awesome. Other, yeah. uh, other entry point memories from anyone out there? For me, um, my dad and my older brother, there's a... Uh, a significant age gap between us. So uh, from them, I remember just like Emily hearing and seeing something that felt larger than life. Um, and then for me, my first memory was Return of the Jedi and uh, just being really connected to Yoda and um, the force and his, the message of, you know, love and compassion and good will overcome, you know, in the end. So <laughs> it makes me super emotional because then when I got this, I remember having to pull over my car and uh, I called my mom. I was like, oh my God, I'm in Star Wars. Yeah. And I can't say anything else, but oh my God. So yeah, that was my first memory. And <laughs> it wow. is something really special to be a part of. So cool. That's so cool. Beautiful to see. Yeah. The, what we grew up as children then uh, turning into professional moments is, is such a cool story. Such a cool story. 
Yeah, mine was uh, 77, A New Hope came out. That was the first movie I ever saw. Oh, and cool. um, I remember being in the theater and going and sitting. And as soon as The Crawl went up, I was hooked. And um, I grew up in New York City in the South Bronx. And yeah. I, I grew up without a lot. I tell this story often. I, I was so in love with the movie, but I couldn't afford to buy any of the toys or I couldn't afford to buy any paraphernalia. So my mom um, went to the fabric store and there was all of these like Star Wars fabric at the fabric store. So she bought like as much Star Wars fabric as she <laughs> could afford. And then she made me and my brother and my sister curtains and pillowcases oh. and sheets and pajamas. And so we good. wore those things every single day. And so from then on, Star Wars has been a part of my life. That's so cute. awesome. So <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I think Star, yeah. I mean, I went, I went and saw it in the movie and wait, I remember waiting in line. I was a little boy and I remember waiting outside and, and waiting. And then as soon as the words, I, I just got hypnotized and drawn in. As soon as the words start coming down the screen and, and you're in outer space and, um, and then, yeah, since then that, that became like, I mean, if you want to talk about movies that you must see, it's like, you've got to see the, the first three star Wars. You, you just yeah. must like, that's like the Godfather. Like you haven't seen that. You should probably check into it. <laughs> it's like yeah. one of those, I mean, and, and, and then I really, I love what you said, Misty. I, I uh, you know, Werner Herzog was speaking about it and, and, and I love the, what he, brought to my mind was the mythology yeah. with which has been created in this universe and kind of a, a spiritualism, which uh, has made more sense to more people than a lot of other options that are out there. And, and there's this, right. there's this inner, inner weaving of, of uh, the human spirit and determination and hope, you know, yeah. that, that yeah. drives on, you know, like when it seems endless and it seems like you can't. And I mean, you know, what does Star Wars give you, man? Well, it depends what you're being aware of when you watch it, I think. But it's meant different things to me throughout the years, and, and, and it does, you know, continues today. As far as getting on the show, I mean, this is, uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't, what do you say about that? You know, it's like you're, you're part of your own childhood dream or, or something like that, you know, to, I mean, that, that part I played as Alpha Trawler, I, I just, I'm so proud of that work just to, to have been able to, the, the whole thing. I, I can't thank enough people, the, the kind of uh, crew that was there to be, be supportive, everything. I'm, I just, I could go on and on, but yeah. Yeah. What a beautiful thing. You know, this, this ripples, right? If we're all throwing pebbles into the pond of life and making ripples, well, George Lucas really did something, huh? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Much love, much love to him. And, and really all of the directors and writers that came in and, and took his vision throughout the years, you know what I mean? And have put their own take on it. Um, yeah. Wow. What a, what a, what a universe. What a, what a crazy, uh, just creative, uh, the creativity. And then like you all said, the messages of hope and, and, and good triumphs over evil and things like that. So relevant right now and things that we need right now, for sure. You know? And how yeah. it's made in with miniatures, like yeah. it's not CG, it's not all this stuff and it whole, it stands up, man. It's like, it's, I mean, you watch Luke taking the, going down to shoot the torpedo oh. and the dust. It's like, I'm still excited when I watch that. Man. <laughs> well, it doesn't yeah. look horny. Yeah. <laughs> there might have been, cool. maybe there were some uh, uh, connotations, but we don't, we don't have to talk about that now. <laughs> I'm Chris, with, Chris, obviously I'm you're Chris. You, uh, yeah, I don't mean to, uh, you obviously have a giant fan. I mean, look at your backdrop there. Uh, <laughs> tell well, us, I'm tell with, us about your, uh, your fandom. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm with uh, Ahmed. I was seven years old in May, 1977, the perfect age. I felt like, um, we went and like, like Tate said, waited out, out in the sun, uh, for, you know, for the movie to start. And, uh, and, you know, back then, you know, we had three channels on TV. I know I sound like an old guy, but we had three <laughs> channels on TV. Um, there was three years in between the films. So, yeah. During that time, your imagination just goes wild with the hero's journey and, and all that. And, and all the figures, um, you know, um, I, I had I got a paper out so I could buy my own Star Wars toys. And, you mm -hmm. know, um, so I, uh, you know, you have all that time in between to make up your own adventures, your own stories. And then you see the next the second film. And, uh, you know, that that was then fast forward to the show. Uh, being cast in the show as um, a few characters, 
you know, uh, I flash back to when I was little and, and all of this is coming together in one, you know, great adventure with all these talented folks. Um, I'm just so grateful for the universe that George created and the, and the imagination, the spark in my imagination that it uh, really blew up. And, and for all ages, you know what I mean? We all, we're all talking about it as kids, as adults, with our children, you know what I mean? As grandparents. Um, yeah. And that's what I think is truly the legacy is that it's inspired families um, and brought, not brought families together, but, you know, families share that experience uh, all together, which is, which is so cool. Um, let's get to some fan questions. And, and again, if you're watching live, um, you can just tag at Wizard World, Facebook, uh, Twitch, or uh, where are we also are, YouTube, um, with your questions, and we will get to them. Uh, but a question uh, that's coming on, on multiple platforms from Disney in in you, Amen. I always butcher the uh, the handles. <laughs> uh, and Prime Lady Lizzie, Prime Lady Lizzie makes it a little more specific, uh, specifically for Ahmed. Um, but then we, all of you can answer this. Um, she says, though, uh, thank you for Jar Jar Jar. Absolutely loved him. And then the question that a bunch of people are asking, I'd love to hear a little bit from you too, is what was it like walking on the set? My gosh, like, I mean, we're going to get to the costumes. We're going to get to sort of the, uh, the effects, things like that. But just walking onto that set for the first day and seeing what, the, what they've created. Um, and Ahmed, I know there was a lot of green screen too, but then just seeing it afterwards. Uh, let's start with you, Ahmed. What, you know, what was it like being on green screen and then seeing it later? I'd love to hear all, again, from the rest of you, what, what the set impact was for you uh, being on the, in the Star Wars universe for the first time. Yeah, it's, it's huge. I mean, you know, Phantom Menace was my first movie. Uh, and I didn't realize how big um, movie sets were going to be. Uh, it was just, and I didn't realize, you know, the army of people that are constantly around sure. building simultaneously as you're shooting on a thing. And then, you know, everybody comes around and touches you at some point in time. Everybody has a job to come and touch you for some reason. <laughs> I didn't recognize that, like, how how enormous it was going to be. and even though there was a lot of, of blue screen and green screen, um, set design and production design was still incredibly important. So yeah. we were immediately immersed in the world as soon as we showed up. And a lot of the um, exteriors were, were green screened, but the interiors were all built and they all had specific reasons for being what they were. That was also the first time as a filmmaker, I recognized how um, just uh, stationary set sets could tell your story. Sure. And as you know, the movies progressed, if you watch the sets, you can watch the evolution of the empire. Like you can see colors leaving, grays coming in, reds um, becoming more prominent, like all of that stuff through the movies <laughs> tells the story. So, um, you know, working with George and being on those sets was not only just, uh, just awe inspiring, but extremely educational. And I was very young when it was happening. So I was just really wide eyed. My set, um, for the prequels was, um, different from all the other star Wars sets in the fact that, what I was doing had never been done before in yeah. movies. Yeah. So um, there was a lot of experimentation, a lot of collaboration, a lot of failure, um, a lot of mistakes that were made and a lot of learning. And because I was both live action and CGI, I got to see um, the uh, physical set and the virtual sets that were being created at the exact same time. ILM would have animatics of virtual sets. They would have pictures of virtual sets. And so this was that kind of the first time in cinema that a, a physical set and a virtual set and a physical character and a virtual character were all being amalgamed into this one thing. So um, it was an enormous learning experience. It was an arduous task. It took a very long time. Yeah. Uh, for Phantom Menace, it took a long time. By the time we got to clones, like everybody knew what was going on. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was inspiring. It was uh, awesome. It was it was larger than life, and it was big. And uh, groundbreaking, like you said, uh, Ahmed. I mean, we, uh, George was doing things that had never been done before. First film shot entirely on digital. You know what I mean? And so, of yeah. course, there were. And what that has done for the film industry, I don't think people realize, but what that has done for the film industry uh, since then is monumental. 
you know? Yeah, he really changed it. I mean, yeah. the thing about George is he's a risk taker yep. and he's an innovator. Um, and uh, through it all, he has the, the, the guts to do it. And, you know, there, there aren't very many human beings out there like George Lucas who can just say, well, we'll we're just going to go this way and see what happens. Yeah. But he changed <laughs> movies. I mean, when we did Clones, and that, Clones was the first digital, digitally shot film, we had, you know, one of these HD monitors, one of the first HD monitors to ever be on a set. And the thing was enormous. It was huge. It was like mad deep. And um, it looked like staring out of a window. And the hardest part about shooting digital, and, and we're talking like, uh, a, a, a DPI resolution that your iPhone kills right now. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. <laughs> your iPhone is way more powerful than the cameras we used in Attack of the Clones. But at that time, it was like looking out of a window. And the biggest problem that we were coming across was whether or not audiences would find this image believable because it was so clear. After a hundred years of film grain, our brains are accustomed to that look. So it takes a, a um, it takes your brain a minute to adjust to um, high def or, or any type of digital signal because the noise is different, right? Yeah. Film noise has, has a texture. Film noise has a character. Digital noise doesn't. It's just like pixelated and squared. It kind of looks like the, this. <laughs> you know, it kind of looks like this Keller and Beck thing, right? So our eyes and our brains are accustomed to looking at that and seeing an <clears> image <throat> that it can't um, organize. With film, it's completely different. Right? Just like digital music and, and um, music on magnetic tape, right? Digital noise and music has a sound, right? Jimi Hendrix is distorted digital, uh, distorted analog music, right? Sure. Distorted digital music sounds like a bunch of you know, it sounds like an old school 28-8 modem, and that's not pleasant. <laughs> so we we had to really find a way to get people's eyes and brains accustomed to what we were doing. Oh my gosh, awesome, Daniel! I want to uh, turn to you, and then we'll get to the cast of Mandalorian because that's a whole a whole different set. But well, oh my gosh, it had to to Rogue One, right? We're going back now to the original series, essentially, in terms of the sets uh, and trying to recreate um, the Imperial starships and the Death Star. Oh my gosh, uh, what was that feeling like walking onto that set for the first time in Darth Vader's suit? My gosh. I always think it's really difficult to explain because you're in your suit, so I don't really see myself. <laughs> yeah. So I, I was having, I was so excited. The first scene is, I ever did on set was when... Um, Director Krennic is standing opposite me and the door comes up and I see him for the first time. So, of course, I can't see myself. I'm looking through my, my helmet, so it feels like you're looking through a window. So it feels like you're almost watching the, the movie. And he's going, look, I, all I'm thinking to myself is, oh, he looks cool. Not realising the shooting the other way and it, it's the Darth Vader being revealed. I didn't, I, I didn't expect that at all. But what is really interesting I mean, about the because I did also with JJ so I did the films with him. Yeah, actually yes. Star Wars then brought back the the film, and with their clout and power, we'd almost in the UK we'd lost where these where all the films were the negatives were developed. So it's really interesting that they did all this to with the digital side, but then also. They helped save the film side. So then Wonder Woman and Batman's and all that lot could be filmed on films and the Joker and this lot. So it's really interesting. You don't re realize how outreaching Star Wars is from the digital side. But what I really enjoyed the most about it was. Oh, I can't be, it's just a whole thing. You don't really understand what you're doing at the time. You know it's a great thing, and you, you just hope. You're just hoping that the fans are going to accept you. Especially yeah. Star Vader is a different person. I'm a bit like, oh well, I'll, I could be in trouble here if they don't like me. But um, I was really <laughs> grateful, and everyone seemed to enjoy the character. Awesome, Mandalorian. Uh, I know a bunch of you played different parts in, in different parts of the Star Wars universe, but um, most recently and specifically, um, 
I just love to hear a little bit from each of you about, again, now we're recreating a, a, a new, not a new world, but a new take on the universe uh, with The Mandalorian, which was done so well and just looked so uh, gritty and cool and, and Western almost, you know what I mean? And I, I would, but, but still with that, that Star Wars uh, aesthetic, you know what I mean, of, of those desert planets and, and all those amazing planets. You know what, again, I'd uh, love to hear from you two of just what that awful, uh, not awful, <laughs> the feeling of awe <laughs> that, you, that you felt uh, on set for the first time. Um, I will echo Daniel in saying that uh, I still, like I, I sort of knew what I was walking into, but I didn't really understand what I was walking into. It yeah. felt larger than life and it it and also i think partly because of the secrecy of the whole thing i knew so little <clears throat> going into it so it was like i really felt like i was going into another universe getting to set the first time and um the episodes that i did we were working on two sound stages and so first i walked through the sound stage that had the green screen and had the razor crest and they were shooting something like trying to work out something really incredible in there and then i went through to where uh the armorers um little like domed room is and it was so <laughs> tangibly specific and beautiful i mean the artistry that every single person involved with the design puts into their work is just i it, it was it was such an honor to get to like use my weapons to get to um i mean the costumes that every single piece was incredible but i yeah i also you know being in that in the helmet and everything I couldn't see very well. So it, it sort of felt like I was in a dream and, and wandering through this space. Um, and it was just like giddy excitement from the beginning. And I sort of felt that from everybody else who was working on it. It sort of yeah. felt like everybody, you know, we're like, we're getting to make our childhood dream. Um, and that joy that goes into the process, I think is, is part of what makes it so spectacular. I think what is really good about Star Wars, whichever project you're on, they really care about it. Whoever's making it, it's like a family. Yeah. Everyone cares about what they're making. Yeah. yeah. I've been fortunate enough to be uh, in the Star Wars, uh, doing Star Wars TV stuff for 14 years, but yeah. Man Mandalorian, um, the very first scene I shot was uh, the ferryman on the frozen ice ocean and um, stepping onto the, uh, the, up onto that, here, which was practical, the whole scene was practical, um, surrounded by the volume, uh, was exactly how you imagine as a, as a, just as a Star Wars fan, not not you know acting fan or TV or movie <laughs> fan. As a Star Wars fan, it's just how you imagine your seven year old self, you know, is stepping up onto this uh, stage, and and uh, you're full of excitement. You want to explode. But you are there to, as a professional, to tell a story and a great responsibility uh, to Star Wars fans. Um, but it still felt like it was in slow motion as I was standing there with the Mandalorian, you know, about to bring his, uh, call his speeder over. It was, yeah. it was you know, among other, uh, other first days on set. That was, that was amazing. Awesome. Jay, me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my very first day was actually uh, the very first shoot day and our scene was the very first shot. So uh, we were on the back lot and um, I had butterflies in my stomach. And again, like Chris iterated, there's, I had gratitude and compassion for um, knowing how big this is and also bringing a character that was part of you know, the Empire Strikes Back that you saw for just a moment and yeah. trying to bring him to uh, more of a forefront. I was just like, okay. And I just remember walking on set with Dave Filoni and uh, he's like so nice. And so he likes to joke a lot and he's like, Hey guys, so we're going to make something here. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> and I've got my sides and he's like, well, let's just run through the scene. And um, it was, you know, our first scene was Quill and Mando on the blurgs and I've not been on a blurg yet. Um, they're like, here's your reins and you know, here's everything. And um just, you know, it was us talking, uh, I was showing him, I led him to the encampment and uh, basically telling him the story about where what this is and, you know, 
have do what you do Mandalorian and bring, you know, so that we can bring again peace back to the Valley. So uh, it was, yeah, it was, I was in awe, um, grateful and excited and really proud. And again, after all of that, and they put me into my suit and I get ready, then it's, you go into your zone of this is, you know, this is really important and this is what I need to do. So focus and, you know, breathe and do your job. So, and we did. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> and shout out, shout out, my gosh, not only to John Favreau, but Dave Filoni for his work on the Clone Wars and the Mandalorian. Uh, what a genius just uh, bringing that, bringing the Star Wars universe back to life and, and JJ obviously too, but you know, but the, the smaller stories, you know, that Dave has, uh, has crafted have been beautiful and amazing. Uh, Tate, Tate, what was it like? All, all, I mean, I had a dressing room next to Apollo Creed, you know, I was like, this is getting, I mean, it was like more and more bizarre to me as it went on, you know, um, but, you know, walking onto set and you're, you're, you're there, you're not, not there. You're, you're in this place. It's a lot of shows that I work, you know, you've got to suspend some disbelief. Sure. These guys that develop this and put, put these sets together. I mean, you're inside this bar in and on an ice planet and that's what you're seeing i mean it's phenomenal man the 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 mastery that's there and 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 then you know what really struck me is seeing the way favreau would work with other directors because he and feloni and that, that everybody's there bryce everybody's all together a lot of the time and to get to kind of ear hustle on those conversations about how they're seen to shoot this next shot and how to draw more story in this direction instead of that. And what a beautiful thing to be able to, um, to hear that, those kinds of years of experience. But I, I really, uh, what Daniel had said, it, it struck me when I uh, walked in as heavy Mondo and I see Emily and, and, and it's, it's, I mean, you're like, you're a little in love, right? That, that whole uniform, you're just like, oh my God, this whole thing going on and the textures in there and the smoke in there. And, and I'm like, and, and I know, you know, you kind of know what you look like, but you're like, I'm like, but you look really cool. Like, I, I, I don't know what this looks like to you, but like, she's like, this is terrifying. This is <laughs> or whatever monstrous, uh, but yeah, what a, what a time, you know, I mean, as far as really make you you're in those spots and 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 it, it makes it so easy to you know be supported into your character there and uh and develop that piece of story i think what chris said is really important you know it's you've got this responsibility of of uh of presenting this story and you can do that a, a myriad of ways um and some will be better than others and and it's helpful to think of what that might look like you know and 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 and, and that's what i love about it all the most is it all all feels like a a precursor to a flow state kind of, because I think it's so important what we do and the pressure then I try to turn up because I want to value what I do and I want to make sure that I do a good job for you. And you, you kind of get into this little flow state between your fear and your adrenaline and what you've studied and then to, to come out and, and to really be able to express that on film. You don't always get to do it. It's like I used to fight mixed martial arts and you don't always get to express your best physical self. Things happen and everything changes in real time. but to be able to be in those spots where you feel like you're synced up within the universe and you're, it's almost like surfing, like riding a wave. That's what it feels like. Yeah. Yeah. And again, shout out to all the production designers and the writers and the set builders and my gosh, for their just creativity. That's what really brings the world to life. And then, and then, and then you obviously, then you come in uh, all and present us the characters, which, which, and then the coupling of that just makes for such, such a beautiful, uh, such a beautiful experience uh, for the fans. So um, so, so cool. So cool. I want to get to uh, some more fan questions. Uh, this has come in various ways um, from a few people from Dan Dudich, um watching in addition to Ernest Jan and also, uh, oh my gosh, where is the other one? <laughs> I want to make sure to get all the fans in here. Uh, Lady Lizzie uh, watching as well. The, 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 the universe is so expansive. Um, and congratulations, Ahmed, because um, this, where this question is going is, what other character would you love to play um, in the Star Wars universe? Um, and also, how do you feel about uh, the transition from just the movies to sort of TV and uh, video games and all the things like that? Um, so I guess just like, 
the overall question, I want to start with you, Ahmed, because I know, uh, and again, congratulations, we're super excited uh, for Star Wars Jedi Temple Challenge. It's going to be that the new Legends of the Hidden Temple we hope for, and you get to play this new character mm -hmm. of a Jedi. Tell us a little bit about what, what you can tell us about uh, getting to now play a new character in the universe. And then everyone else, if you always had a favorite character uh, that you'd love to play, uh, we'd love to hear it. Well, um, I always wanted to be Han Solo. Yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid, because you know he he was so cool, and he had the Millennium Falcon, and he had a, a, a cool homeboy that he got to fly the galaxy with. He was furry. <laughs> so I always I, I always dug Han Solo. I always wanted to play cool Han Solo. As I got older, like Obi Wan Kenobi was more of my favorite yeah. character because I just really love how, especially what Ewan played him. He had a like, bit of a snark to him. <laughs> he was he was he wasn't like this. And you know, this is a, a you know a lot of my martial arts teachers growing up were like this. You know, you see these guys as these you know, very spiritual, very, you know, centered human beings. And then you realize they have a personality and they tell jokes and it makes them human, you know what I'm saying? So, and it helps you relate to them so much more. So Obi-Wan, uh, as I got older, was was my joint. Um, and, you know, this is my third Star Wars character, actually. Jar Jar was my first. And then I did a cameo because of Anthony Daniels yeah. in Attack of the Clones. Yeah. Anthony was like, on my day off, Anthony gave me a pilot's uniform and said, we're going to be in the movie. Come to work tomorrow. And I was like, it's my day off, man. I want to <laughs> go to Bondi and surf. He was like, no, you're going to be in the movie. <laughs> so he made me like put this thing on and then we ended up in the bar scene in Attack of the Calls. And then George saw us there and he was just like, you guys get close up. So he gave us close ups. And that day they were like scanning people for toys and then they scanned me. And then all of a sudden, like this toy showed up and <laughs> it people, it got sold and it was in stores and my mom bought a few of them and she was like, oh yeah. And this character was called Ahmed Beck. And I had yeah. no idea that they were going to do this. Right. But it kind of went out there. So, um, flash forward to they're asking me to do Jedi Temple Challenge, which is the first game show kind of. This is the first unscripted thing Star Wars has ever done. Sure. And it's the first, um, uh, first anything Star Wars led by anything black. Like there have been black people in Star Wars, but no one was really the lead of it. Sure. And um, this is the first thing that they came out with, and that was very important to me. Um, it was also really important to me that this was aimed at kids because kids have always been the thing that I was a kid when Star Wars came out and kids have always had that, uh, burst of imagination and hope for Star Wars that you always want to hold on to. So when you see kids watch Star Wars, it just makes you feel like a kid and love it again. Yeah. And I really wanted to give something back to kids. So, um, when they asked me to be Keller and Beck, um, as a Jedi, I was ecstatic for it. You know, I really, my career has been one of risk taking and trying things that um, could work, could not work. And I really got that from George, you know what I'm saying? Like I, even, even outside of Star Wars, what I do outside of Star Wars really has that kind of same uh, impetus. You know, there's something about those Bay Area innovators, you know, like, Steve Jobs and Wozniak and and, and, and and George Lucas. There's yeah. something up there. Francis Coppola, who would show up on set some days and intimidate the hell out of all of us. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> but um, I decided to do this because it was a new frontier. Um, this was a new medium for Disney and it was a new medium for Lucasfilm, um, something that had never been approached. And I was just like, yo, let's keep the street going. I mean, I kind of like doing the firsts. I kind of like being out there on the front lines, trying something new. And um, all of those kids game shows like Legends of the Hidden Temple and Double Dare and all the stuff, you know, I was a big fan of those kids game shows. And quietly, I always wanted to be a game show host. I know it's kind of yeah. corny, but yeah. like growing up watching game shows, I was like, you know, what? I could probably do that. <laughs> that would be a lot of fun. Give people some money for no reason, you know? <laughs> so I always wanted to be a game show host, and I was just like, oh, this is perfect, you know? That's so cool. I came up with the character uh, Keller and Beck as a Jedi, um, and the uh, 
and I'm also a producer on the show. So the team of producers really came together in, in, in a creative uh, way to create the show and create, help me create this character. And they gave me so much room to be creative. So Kellerin, the name Kellerin, I always loved like derivatives of names. Like I always loved like Wilhelm and Willem and William, you know, as, as names kind of traveled through time, they change, you know, or when people immigrate to another country, they, yeah. they shorten their name. And then you find out like, you know, Rose was really Rosenbaum, you know, <laughs> for back in the day. So I always loved those. And I always thought of Kelleran as a name that could be derived from. Um, and I wanted to connect the sequels and the prequels to the game show. So um, I took the last name of Ahmed Beck and made that the family name. And um, Kylo Ren is a derivative of Kelleran. Yeah. So, you know, the idea is Jedi names uh, can be derived from and changed throughout generations. So Kelleran is the original. Kylo Ren is what happens in the sequel. Um, and therefore that combines the prequels and the sequels to Kelleran back. Very nice. We are super nerding out. We are super nerding out. This is amazing. I'm in. I'm, only yo, on a Star I'm Wars panel. Only on a Star Wars panel do we talk about the etymology of the Star Wars names. Beautiful. I'm, <laughs> I'm all about this stuff. I care about this stuff. I no. care. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, we're, we we all said it in the beginning. We all grew up and we all have the toys and we all watch the movies and we, you know, um, and that's what Star Wars is about. Other favorite uh, characters from around the room or characters you'd, you'd want to be? And some of them might be the characters that you got to play. Uh, let's be honest. But <laughs> I mean, yeah, favorite. for me, Boba Fett was always the coolest dude. And I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. and so when, yeah, I didn't know, you know, they called me after I read for Alpha Trawler and then they said, go out to this uh, place in the valley and we need to fit you for some things. So I go in and it's not until, I don't know, deep into that process mm -hmm. and they bring in this helmet. Yeah. And uh, I didn't know that was, and they're like, well, we just got to make sure this fits you. And I was like, <gasps> yeah. <laughs> like that. That's, awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So cool. Yeah. For me after, uh, uh, since I play 3PO, um, when I was brought in uh, for Q90 uh, and they told me he was a, a bounty hunter, you know, I was like, like Tate, Boba Fett was always the one I wanted to be. And so when they, they were, I got a droid who's a bounty hunter, I'm like, that's, that could be 3PO and Boba Fett mixed together, you know, my, you know, yeah, my two cool. favorites. So, um, that, that was, uh, yeah, that, that, that was really exciting to be able to figure out what, what he's like and how he, uh, moves. And, and eventually I, I, uh, I thought that he looked like a praying mantis. So I researched yes. praying mantis, um, bugs and how their movement and everything. And they're really isolating as, as almost like a droid. So, that's how I played him. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, my, my favorite character now is my own character. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> That's okay. Well, and again, another character that we, we talked about it that was in the original, you know, like popped up in the background of, a, you know, of Star Wars before. And we were so excited to see like that, t that droid be brought to life. You know what I mean? And be like, oh yeah, what is this droid like? You know, so cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you talking about the RA7 droid? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? I've, I've seen them in the back and, and getting everybody, but. Well, that's a cool thing about Mandalorian is that it's all new, but it all feels familiar. You know, like exactly. we should assume that that this character, uh, we don't always have to assume that this character that we're seeing is exactly that same character that we saw before. It's like, you know, Tate was saying, I mean, like um, Ahmed was saying, uh, deriving from, you know, this is something that looks familiar. I wonder what his story is. You know, that's yeah. what I love about Mandalorian is that so many new stories, but they all feel like they were from our own imagination. That's right. That's awesome. Uh, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of the armor, and uh, she makes <laughs> me feel so much cooler than I feel in real life. So, And I had that same experience that Tate had of, um, you know, I knew I was playing this character who was kind of a leader of some people, and I, I knew so little. And then I go out to uh, uh, Legacy Effects in the Valley, and they show me, and, and they assumed that I knew all this. Right. Um, they assumed that I'd seen pictures. They assumed I knew 
like <laughs> what episodes I was in and what I was doing. And I knew nothing. And so they were like, oh, OK, well, should we show you a sketch? And I just I couldn't speak. And then like getting fitted for the, you know, the breastplate and then seeing all of that come together. It was just. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> My gosh. My gosh. So cool. Misty, favorite characters? Uh, Yoda. And so, oh yeah. yeah, you mentioned that. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and same thing. I mean, I've been working with Legacy um, since the beginning of my career. Congo was my first job. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Film Amy, right? Amy it was Amy. Amy uh -huh. the girl. Yeah, that was one awesome. of the Amys. There were two of us. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, yes, Lori. No, uh, she, you know, was part of Team Amy with me. Um, so when I went in for my fittings, like, you know, I know Jason and he, you know, sculpted Quill. And he's like, you want to see your character? It's like, yes, you know. And so, and I saw him and then I was like, oh, and then it was like, can I see, you know, the sculpt and everything? Because I've been training, I know suit work and um, it's been a while since I've been in a practical suit. I've been doing a lot of mocap. Um, yeah. I know the weight and the oxygen deprivation that it has. So when I put the whole thing on for the first time and John uh, Rosengrant uh, walked me around uh, after that fitting, I was like, okay, I need to up my cardio and my weights because this is really, really, really heavy. <laughs> and I was like, more squats, more squats. <laughs> so, but yeah, my favorite character of you know the original trilogy was Yoda. And uh, my wish would be to be one of um, Baby Yoda's Jedi Master teachers. Oh, <laughs> cool. No, spoil no spoilers for season two, Miss Yara. We don't know if you know. <laughs> no spoilers. <laughs> no, it's a wish. I might as well just throw it out Oh, there. of course. I'm just joking. <laughs> So, oh, there's plenty of there's plenty of fans uh, that we all have our storylines, right? Of what we what we hope for. <laughs> uh, we're excited to see Mandalorian uh, two come back. Daniel, um, is it Darth Vader? Or I've got, you got? he's quite a strong character, but I've got to stay with my childhood dream of being an Imperial Guard. They've kind of disappeared a little bit, unfortunately, but I'm still, point. time for a comeback. Time for a comeback, Imperial Guard. Yeah, I feel like you were uh, you would crush that. And I wanted to say this, we're, we're about out of time, but I just wanted to uh, shout out to Daniel and Chris. Um, again, all of you amazing actors, but to to take over those two roles that are so iconic and and move in such an iconic way. And I know you, uh, I know Chris, you specifically worked with Anthony Daniels. Um, Daniel, did you, uh, the, one of the questions from a fan was, uh, did you actually talk to David Prowse at all? Or were you just using sort of the videos and such that you saw? Well, we, so we sat down with the director because obviously there was two Vaders in, yes. in, yeah, yeah, yeah. in Rogue. Um, unfortunately, the first one got, they didn't use his footage in the end because he got a slightly different walk and he slightly took, anyway, we won't go into that. <laughs> but it's, um, no, we sat down and went through all his movements. We went through everything wow. he does. And um, he sent me away with a stick. I had everything that Darth Vader had ever done behind the scenes footage. Um, outtakes and everything and we went through it and we just built it up and it was just trying to do a tribute but also making current but not out of his comfort zone from what you expect him to do and i hope sure. people enjoyed what we did oh my gosh awesome that's a that's a shout out to brian shapiro who's watching a question um from him and my gosh one of the greatest vader scenes of all time i think we can all agree is that final uh down the hallway vader scene like we were we were talking before in the dj set that if there was just a movie of just like slasher uh darth vader you know what i mean just going and just, just destroying <laughs> the universe everyone would be in and we'd love to have you back daniel so <laughs> um i just want to give you all a shout out we, we're out of time but i want to uh, go around the room and just have everyone give their final thoughts uh we have fans watching from around the world and what's extra special about this panel and I said it to you all beforehand but um you know, oftentimes we see we see the faces uh, out there, and you are all the folks like behind. And, and we've seen your faces in, in various other roles and parts, obviously. But the characters we're talking about today, the things that you're doing behind the scenes, from stunt work to puppetry to physical theater um, uh, to mocap, is is so brilliant and so beautiful. And it, it's just an honor for me to uh, talk with all of you in this brief time and just hear a little bit about your experiences. And we thank you um, because it often goes um, un untalked about, if you 
will. You know what I mean? You can watch the extra features and the special features. But um, And so shout out to you all uh, for bringing these larger than life and these fantastical and, and such creative characters uh, to mm -hmm. like a physical form. Uh, again, thank you all so much uh, for everything you do. And let, let's just go around the room again um, for each of you just to give a final, final thoughts, final words to the fans watching. Uh, we appreciate, I know I speak on behalf of all of them who are watching. We just thank you for giving us a little break, you know, from, from the craziness and a lot of hope, uh, which is the message from Star Wars and, you know, just your final shout outs to the fans. Um, I just want to say thank you. You know, I've been in the Star Wars galaxy for 20 plus years now. And yeah. I've, I've always appreciated all the love and, um, respect from not just the fans, but all my colleagues, all my friends, everyone who has been a part of this crazy galaxy that we call Star Wars. One of the things that I love about being Kelleran Beck, the sabered hand, is I get to um, dream and I get to create. And I never dreamed I was ever going to be a part of Star Wars. That was never a trajectory or a career path for me. This kind of right now you can have a career in Star Wars. It's it's yeah. a kind of a new thing. But you know, a lot of times I'm hearing like we people are escaping to Star Wars. So they're taking a break from the real world. And um I don't think you should. I think you shouldn't <laughs> escape from Star Wars. I think mm. Star Wars should be what you bring into your world. Because Star Wars and what we do allows you to dream and dreaming got us uh the theory of relativity dreaming got us calculus dreaming got us dna dreaming got us all of the characters that we are wonderfully uh fortunate to be and to play and star wars brings this idea of hope for the future yeah. and balance to every one of our lives so don't go away from it. Don't escape from it. Bring it in and allow your dreams and your hope to flow through you and grow. Awesome. Beautifully said, Ahmed. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to every single one of you. Um, this is new for me, so it's <laughs> overwhelming. Um, <laughs> I you did great, Misty. It. You did. You did great. It was so great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the fans, I wish you wellness, and I wish you compassion and empathy, and I wish you the courage to go after your dreams and to never give up. It. It's not over. It's never over. I mean, I'm getting coming to all of this, you know, a little bit later in life. So, trust your journey and um, trust your heart and your, your passions and just go for it. And again, thank you so much for your support and uh, peace and may the force be with you. Yay, thanks Misty. <laughs> <laughs> um, I echo that, that, I mean, first, just such a, an enormous thank you because it is, I mean, it's a dream, it's a, a thrill, it's, an honor to get to play characters in this universe and to be so warmly embraced is just the best feeling in the world. And um, I think that the, the love that Star Wars fans have for this universe, I just hope that you guys carry the force of that out everywhere because we need that kind of love. Um, and like Ahmed was saying, it doesn't just have to be limited to like, when you're in, you know, watching a Star Wars movie or when you're, when you're cosplaying or whatever, just take it with you everywhere. And, um, and don't be dissuaded. I mean, I know that this has been a, a challenging time for, for a lot of people, for a lot of reasons. Um, and I, one of the things that I have always cherished about the Star Wars stories is that the hope that remains. Um, and I think that we could all use that. So you guys already have that being such huge fans. So just <laughs> let that seep out into everything, please. Awesome. Thank you, Emily. I think the biggest thing for me is, is family. Because once you're in the Star Wars world, you become a family. 
from all the, the people that work on the movies to all the fans. It's the whole thing that works together and it's a snowball effect. One doesn't work without the other. So when they come together, it becomes this whole family, which is what I'd be most impressed about by joining the Star Wars sort of world. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. Yeah, so thankful to be, uh, to be, go from a fan to be in the Star Wars universe. I mean, um, I'm, I'm grateful for those who helped me uh, along the way to whether they, I was learning either acting or, um, or building stuff. And the big, biggest thing I learned uh, kind of in my progression is, is in this galaxy, you have not come this far to fail that whatever your goal is, uh, whatever it is in any field, figure out, you know, that it always feels like it's so far away, but you figure out what is one thing that you can do to get closer to that goal and just do that thing. And then after you do that, then figure out what the, another step is. It could be just a little closer to that, to that goal. Um, for me, that's what, that, that's what, uh, this experience has taught me. And, um, I'm, I'm uh, so grateful and, and humbled to be work, to be able to work with the people on this panel um, today. Um, and uh, anyway, thank you again, fans, for from all over for all the love for Star Wars and for its characters. Thanks, Chris. Um, uh, what, what, first, what a great th thank you guys all for this time and uh, for filling my afternoon like this. What it's yeah. <laughs> it's been beyond and. Uh, I guess what Star Wars has always meant to me and what I would say to fans is that, um, you know, when I look at Star Wars, I look at it as a balancing of forces of nature of good and evil. Uh, I look at it as um, people that are, are forcing uh, their own sense of, of, of wholeness uh, into the world and, and going against an empire to try to just to try to grow. Right. And, and this idea right now engendered of, of hope within I think that that's everywhere. And, and I would ask everybody that, that, that looks into this, that relates to that, that you seek truth. And, and at that highest point of truth is that there, 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 is no, there is no freedom, there is no justice if we're not all in a level playing field, if there's different rewards and there's different punishments for different uh, species of the universe of Star Wars or anywhere else. And um, I just hold on to that and, and, and find out that you want to find that truth so bad that you'll die for it because there's somebody else that'll try to push another truth and we just got to balance everything then. That's, that's awesome. awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Balance, uh, equality for all, uh, black lives matter. May the force be with you. This is the way, uh, thank you all so much, um, for being here. Um, we cannot wait to see you more, uh, in the star Wars galaxy, whether it's on Jedi temple challenge, the Mandalorian season two, uh, any upcoming films, everything that Disney plus is trying to create right now. Uh, we know that we will see you uh, again in some medium, uh, in this galaxy and also just good luck to you all uh, outside of the star Wars universe in your, in your continued careers. Um, we really appreciate you for being here. One more big round of emojis out there, Wizard World Virtual. All the fans watching from around the world um, for Chris Bartlett, Misty Roses, Tate Fletcher, Emily Swallow, Daniel Nepros, and Ahmed Best, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Uh, such a pleasure, Thank such an honor. Hey, this is Alex Malari Jr. and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Your emperor commands it. Thanks for watching.